early on in my career as an engineer, was when I was just starting, I'd get a new recording and I'd go home and I'd sit down in my, you know, highly tweaked system and sit in the middle and listen to it and, and analyze it and figure out, you know, what it was doing and what I liked and what I didn't like. And, and, um, and, but I caught myself and realized that I was getting to a point where I, didn't, I wasn't liking music. It was listening to all the other stuff. Um, so what I began to do then was purposely put something on in another room and listen that way. Um, it's something I learned and I again would tell my students, so you never lose sight of your audience. Never lose sight of your audience. That's, those are the people that are going to, to determine whether it's successful or not. So, um, so when I say that, I say when I go to the studio and I have referencing, there's certain, some things that I listen to for placement. There's some things that I listen to for frequency response, and there's some things I just listen to because I like the way they make me feel. And as I move around the control room, my listening is between the speakers, but it's also everywhere that I'm in working in that room because that's the way that I work. You're over by the rack adjusting an EQ on something. Well, you're listening to the whole thing in some sort of context. So, you know, so it's about you know getting all those those marks about how wide it is, where the center is, what the vocal sounds like, and being familiar and very detailed about that. But then there's about, how does this feel in here? Because ultimately, that's how you're measuring what you're doing. So for kind of feel and, and sonic properties, I really like uh, Miles Davis' Tutu record, which I think was mixed by a guy named Eric Calvi. Um, um, for uh, this, and for sheer feel and, and kind of... Um, very dense mix that, that sounds different on just about every speaker you listen to. There's a group called Rise, Robots Rise. Uh, I don't even know if it's available anymore, but um, I know for a fact it was mixed on NS10s. And uh, it's just a very intriguing uh, CD to me because it, um, because it, it does literally sound, you, you hear different things on different speaker systems. Um, but it feels great. Um, there's a there's a CD that I did. I mean, I, my my, what I tend to do is I listen to, um, I listen to other people's work, a lot, and in this is in terms of me referencing in the studio. And then I might listen to one or two things that I've done um, because I know them and I know what I did. But it's pretty demoralizing to hear you know something that sounds so great and then listen to something you did. It's like you know. So I try, I try not to juxtapose them too much. I, I grace, basically, you know, I go from the feel good, sounds okay, to something I did. So I don't <laughs> have to look, listen next to Bob Clare Mountain or, uh, or Al Schmidt. So um, the Rise of Robot Rise in that category. The one that I did is a, a CD by a guy named Martin Sexton. It's called Black Sheep. And it was done really quickly. And it sounds really good. It's some of the best work ever I did. And, uh, and I know intimately what, what is there. Um, so that's really for the critical placement, depth, sonic quality, all that stuff. Um, uh, recently I've been listening to um, Paul Anka's record by Al Schmidt that came out last year, which I think is an amazing recording. Um, uh, there's a Chic record that I like, chic Chicism. Uh, I think it was done by James Farber. And uh, the opening track on that, Call Your Love, is just fantastic for, for low end and, and basic feel and, and uh, impact. Um, uh, Al Schmidt, I already mentioned, but he's, I, what I listen to him for is depth in terms of sound stage. It's like, is it, you know, all that incoherence, am I hearing it out of the speaker system?